WordPress speed optimization has definitely changed. Web Vitals are going to become a ranking factor in May 2021. GT Metrics came out with Lighthouse recommendations and the Performance and Structure tab. And I want to make an updated video to show you how I not only got really good scores, but also a fast time to first bite, a fully loaded time of 0.8 seconds. And that is really good considering the post that I ran it through is very, very long. It has so many images on it and over 500 comments and even if you click through my website you can tell it loads super quickly so once you know it this post is about wordpress speed and i will leave a link to this in the video description it has all the topics i'm going to be going over in this video but i also created timestamps in the video description so you can jump to certain sections at any time i'll be going over testing tools hosting page builders plugins bear with me and i promise you will learn something and you will get your gt metrics report a lot better gt metrics is definitely my favorite tool because you can quickly see your time to first bite your fully loaded time and the core web vitals that Google will be using as a ranking factor. These can also be found in your Google Search Console report in the core web vitals section. The structure tab, which gives you more specific recommendations, but the waterfall tab is probably the most useful because it shows you heavy CSS or JavaScript that loads on your website. So if you notice these take a long time to load, I bet you might be using a slow page builder like Elementor or Divi. If you notice your fonts take a long time to load, you might see some font families, weights, or even font icons are being loaded even when they're not being used. So you really want to be minimal with your fonts, host them locally, but just know that the waterfall tab is really good for finding specific elements on your website that take long to load. For testing your mobile site, I would recommend Think with Google because it uses a 4G connection instead of the 3G connection in PageSpeed Insights. KeyCDN's performance test is really good for measuring time to first byte in 10 global locations. And finally, for finding slow plugins on your website, use Query Monitor. Just be sure to delete it when you're done. And I will also get into this a little bit later, but those are key tools I definitely recommend. Posting is by far the number one factor in the WordPress optimization guide. It's also by far the most affiliate-based, biased, topic about WordPress speed because we all know how many affiliates are trying to make commissions, including me. But I'm at least going to tell you to join the WordPress hosting Facebook group and get unbiased opinions from knowledgeable people. In that group, you're going to come across conversations, Facebook polls, and migration results of people moving away specifically from lower quality shared hosting to faster cloud hosting. And I would skip shared hosting altogether, especially if you're using Elementor, Divi, WooCommerce, or any high CPU plugins on your website. Cloud hosting can just handle that a lot better. Do your own research and you will see trends like people moving away from SiteGround to Cloudways. And that correlates with Backlinko's test where he found SiteGround had some of the worst time to first bytes out of all these hosts. I performed my own speed test and this also concluded that SiteGround had a slow time to first bite. EIG brands like Bluehost and HostGator are not good. I didn't test Lightspeed servers or Gridpane, which I want to do in my next one. But even just by browsing through some of these sites like Cloudways DigitalOcean versus SiteGround Grow Big, you can see a huge difference in how fast they load. So yes, choosing a faster cloud host, it will make a huge difference in your load times. So I just encourage you to do your own research and look at some of the polls that were taken in some of these groups. It's usually one of the faster cloud hosts. So who do I recommend? I basically dug through all these polls as well as looked at trends on who people are migrating to, ran my own tests, and I personally settled on Cloudways Digital Ocean. So these are the ones that I recommend. Cloudways, Digital Ocean, or Vulture High Frequency. Lightspeed servers are very popular. Kingsta is still very fast, and they have awesome support. 
but I don't think they're as fast as Cloudways or Gridpane. Gridpane, you don't see a lot because they don't have an affiliate program, but it's owned by Patrick Gallagher, who is heavily involved in this group, and I have not seen one bad review about Gridpane. It's similar to Cloudways, where you sign up and set up a server like DigitalOcean or Vulture High Frequency, and they provide you with the panel and support. A2 hosting is good if you're on a budget, but I would still lean towards Cloudways Digital Ocean or Vulture High Frequency, Lightspeed, or Gridpane. If you do sign up for Cloudways, I have a promo code OMM25 that gives you 25% off your first two months, and it does credit me the sale, which I do appreciate. But I at least try to provide you with honest hosting recommendations and tell you to join these groups so you can stay away from the other affiliate traps. Page builders got crushed in the new GT Metrics update once they started incorporating Lighthouse recommendations. And that's because Elementor and Divi specifically add a lot of CSS and JavaScript to your website. So you'll see a lot of people moving away to Oxygen Builder, Generate Press, Cadence Theme, Genesis Framework is also lightweight and Gutenberg are all good alternatives. But I can tell you this, I made the mistake of designing my website in Elementor and had to hire WP Johnny for his page builder removal services. And he started by removing my header, menu, sidebar, and footer. And I could tell my website loaded way quicker after that. Even if you don't plan on removing the page builder completely, at least hard code those areas because it will make a huge improvement. I will leave a link to WP Johnny's services in the video description. Just know that he is super busy. If you do plan on sticking with Elementor, they do have optimized DOM output and improved asset loading in their experimental section. So they are releasing these new performance enhanced just whenever you update your plugin, check the change log for a performance enhancement. If they released one, then make sure you take advantage of it. If you plan on sticking with your page builder, you can also use Perf Matters or Asset Cleanup to unload unused assets created by the page builder. So if you don't use Elementor Animations or Swiper, ShareLink, Dialog, or Sticky, then you can disable them. And finally, if you do plan on using Divi, don't use the Divi Rocket plugin. It's not very good. I would generally use another cache plugin, which I'll cover later. Just stay away from the slow builders. There's been a lot of tests confirming this, and I understand it's easy to pump out websites for clients, but if it's your own website or you actually care about your client, then do them and yourself a favor and at least optimize the page builder or start removing it. We all know plugins can slow on your website, so I'm gonna go over some less obvious tips. The WP Hive Chrome extension lets you search the WordPress repository and tells you whether a plugin has an impact on memory usage or page speed. I also have a list of common slow plugins to avoid. Most of them include page builders, chat plugins, statistics, social sharing, sliders, portfolios, some plugins are pretty infamous for causing high CPU, so try and look for lightweight alternatives. I have a short little list. Um, for backups, Updraft Plus is good. For SEO, Rank Math is definitely less bloated than Yoast and comes with more features. If you haven't switched, I definitely would. Or SEO Press is also good. SSL and Redirects you really shouldn't need a plugin for, and there's a few alternatives here if you would like to check them out. If your plugin has modular design, then you should disable the features that you're not using. Finally, use Query Monitor to find your slowest plugins. All you have to do is install it, go to a page on your website, go to Queries, Queries by Component, and then find the slowest plugins on your website. New Relic also does this, and I believe GoDaddy did update the P3 Performance Profiler plugin, but just try and stay away from slow plugins and be minimal if you can and focus on those lightweight plugins. Caching really comes down to three things. Which cache plugin are you using? How did you configure the settings? And are you using things like server-side caching from your hosting company? I generally recommend WP Rocket. If you're using a Lightspeed server, I would use Lightspeed Cache plugin. And for SiteGround, use their SG Optimizer plugin instead of WP Rocket, since they made a big update to it, and it basically now includes every single feature in WP Rocket. Lightspeed and 
SG Optimizer also use server-side caching, which is faster than the file-based caching done by other cache plugins. In all other instances, I would usually go with WP Rocket. And the main reason for that is because it has a lot of features built in that most cache plugins do not have. So for example, database cleanup, CSS and JavaScript optimization, delaying JavaScript, posting things locally like Google Analytics or Facebook Pixel, preloading links and fonts, prefetch and preload, heartbeat control. There's just a lot of things that it has that many other cache plugins do not. So that's why it was rated very highly in a lot of Facebook polls and is also the plugin I use. How you configure your cache plugin also has a large impact. So I have tutorials on most cache plugins on my website. I know most of you are using WP Rocket, so I'll quickly go over the settings, but just know that I will list some alternative solutions if you're not using WP Rocket. Otherwise, you can just simply copy my settings. One thing you want to look at is the file optimization tab. So this is where you minify CSS files and JavaScript and combine files. If minify gives you trouble and breaks your site, then you'll want to view your source code, find those problematic files, and exclude them here. One key feature is the delay JavaScript execution. So this lets you delay heavy JavaScript that loads below the fold. It can be AdSense, it can be your comments like Gravatars and WP Discus, but any heavy JavaScript that loads below the fold, consider delaying. This will save a lot of your initial load time. If you're not using WP Rocket, you can use flying scripts to do this. The way WP Rocket works is it delays it until user interaction, while flying scripts sets a timeout period in seconds until the JavaScript is executed. The next tab is the media settings. WordPress 5.5 and up has lazy load built in. You always want to make sure you exclude your logo and any above the fold images from lazy load since those are critical and need to be loaded immediately. Missing image dimensions fixes the specify image dimension errors in the legacy GT metrics report. This basically adds a width and height to your image attributes, which can sometimes fix CLS issues in PageSpeed Insights. Disable WordPress embeds is pretty much similar to Cloudflare's hotlink protection, where it prevents people from copying and pasting your images on their website, which sucks up your bandwidth. You usually don't want to enable WebP caching, and for preload, you usually want to activate preloading. Link preloading means if users hover over a link, that page will download in the background. So by the time they actually click it, it loads pretty much instantly. You can also use the Flying Pages plugin to do this. I believe Perf Matters also does this. Prefetch DNS requests lets browsers anticipate external resources and load them faster. So you can find your third-party code in GT Metrics or PageSpeed Insights. This might be Google Fonts, Analytics, YouTube, Facebook. So find which third-party code is loaded on your website and add their domains here. Preloading fonts can be done by viewing your GT Metrics waterfall report, copying your fonts from the fonts tab, and pasting them into WP Rocket. You always want to test this to make sure it actually has a positive impact on your load time. Advanced rules, you pretty much you don't need to do anything there. Database cleanup, schedule it once a week or so, and install WP Optimize once in a while because that lets you further clean your database and delete unused plugin tables. CDNs, I usually recommend Cloudflare, especially with their APO, or Bunny CDN is also good and highly recommended in Facebook groups. Disabling the WordPress heartbeat can be done through manual code and WP Rocket, and a lot of speed plugins do this. The add-ons tab lets you host things locally like Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel. Configuring the Cloudflare tab. For image optimization, I usually recommend Short Pixel. Otherwise, that's the WP Rocket settings. The last step is to enable server-side caching in your host. This usually doesn't come with shared hosting and is only with cloud hosting. But many cloud hosts have options for Memcached or Redis and Varnish. If you do have those options in your hosting account, definitely enable those because it will make a big impact and is faster caching than your cache plugin.
CDNs are good if your visitors are far away from your origin server, and it's recommended in the WordPress optimization guide. But if your visitors are local, then you usually don't need a CDN. It can also help offload bandwidth, which can reduce CPU. There are three CDNs I generally recommend, which are highly rated in Facebook groups. And those are Cloudflare, especially if you use their APO. Bunny CDN is consistently performant. Or if you're using a Lightspeed server, use the Quick Cloud CDN. All are rated pretty highly in Facebook groups. If you're using Cloudflare, there's a few extra steps I would do create a cache everything page rule, which caches dynamic content, otherwise it won't. If that gives you trouble, you can also try the WP Cloudflare Super Page Cache plugin. And finally, try to use their APO. It's $5 a month, but it uses Cloudflare's Edge Network. Even if you don't use Cloudflare for anything else, their DNS is much faster than GoDaddy or Namecheap or any of the other cheap DNS providers. So if your DNS is still hosted there, then I would definitely switch it over to Cloudflare. Fonts can really slow down your website. If you have a lot of font families and weights and even font icons and like Elementor, then those are all gonna slow down your website. Go to the Google Fonts website and only download the font families and weights that you actually use. Try to be as minimal as possible. The next thing you can do is host your fonts locally. So instead of being served from fonts.gstatic.com or Font Awesome, you're hosting them locally on your server. This can be done using the OMGF plugin, or you can also use Transfonter. Be sure to use the WOFF2 format if you are doing this. So the next thing you can do is preload fonts. How you do this, you go to the Fonts tab in GT Metrics Waterfall, copy your font URLs and paste them into the preload font section in WP Rocket. You can also use plugins like Perf Matters to do this or do it manually through code. The final step is to make sure that fonts remain visible during web font load or text remains visible. Basically, you install this plugin by Gijo, but if you want to do this manually, this is what it does. It just adds a font display swap in the CSS and that will fix the ensure text remains visible during web font load and PSI. Third-party code is anything that loads on your website that has to load from another website. Google Fonts, Google Analytics, Tag Manager, AdSense, embedded YouTube videos, or even social sharing plugins and gravatars can all impact your GT Metrics report. I'm going to be going over these step by step. For Google Analytics, you can host them locally, either using WP Rocket or Flying Analytics. Facebook Pixel, you can do in WP Rocket. This is the only way I know to host Facebook Pixel locally. Grow by Mediavine was rated the number one fastest social sharing plugin by WP Rocket. For comments, if you have a lot of them, you can use the WP user avatar to upload a custom, optimized, locally hosted Gravatar image to display in your comments. So anyone that doesn't have a Gravatar image will use this one. In WP Rocket, they also have an option to replace a YouTube iframe with a preview image and lazy load iframes, which can help fix YouTube errors. Another trick you can do is to prefetch your DNS requests. I mentioned earlier to minimize the third party code, you want to review which host names are loaded on your website and compare them to this nifty little list from Luke. I will leave a link to this in the video description, but if you are loading Google Maps or fonts or any of this third-party code, there's some also listed in the comments here, then you can copy these URLs and paste them into the prefetch DNS request section. You can also prefetch manually or using perf matters. WP Discus or other common plugins take a long time to load. There are some ways to optimize them, so just be sure to configure those settings. And finally, for Google Analytics as well, some types of tra tracking codes load slower than others. It really depends on what features you need in Google Analytics, but if you really just use it for basic features, you can enable minimal or minimal inline, which is a smaller tracking code than some of the other ones. You can also disable display features using the Perf Matters plugin. This prevents a second request to double click, and that will also eliminate 
an entire second request from showing up in your GT metrics report. So just be sure to view which third party code is loaded on your website, try to avoid them when possible and optimize them if you can. There are probably a lot more ways to optimize images than you think. ShortPixel actually does a lot of these. They compress them, serve images in next-gen formats, which is the WebP option, strip exif data, and they also have a ShortPixel Adaptive Images plugin to resize images for mobile devices. That will take care of a lot of things. Properly sized images means you need to resize them to the correct dimensions. I know my blog width is 680 pixels, so I resize them to 680 pixels. If you're using Chrome to take screenshots, the Zoom Chrome extension, it lets you take precise zoom levels. So I can take a screenshot pretty much of the exact image I want to get without having to resize them and lose quality but make sure you're following the correct dimensions like your logo, sliders, sidebar, full width blog images, they all call for specific dimensions. Defer off-screen images means you need to lazy load them. Serve images and next-gen formats is the WebP I talked about in ShortPixel, or you can use the WebP Converter for Media plugin to also do this if you're not using ShortPixel. Efficiently encode images just means you need to compress them and try to strip the exif data. Combine images using CSS sprites. If you have like a featured on section where you have a bunch of logos or decorative images, you can actually combine all those files into one single CSS sprite using a CSS sprite generator. And that will load all these images into one file instead of say the 15 files that they were initially loaded on. You only want to do this with decorative images because it can really hurt your SEO if they're important and they have alt text and so forth. So I'll be covering a few other ways to optimize them. The GT Metrics Legacy Report shows you a lot of different types of things. Serve scaled images is the properly size images item in GT metrics, but the legacy reports actually shows you the specific dimensions they should be resized to, while the new report does not. It also shows you specify image dimensions errors, which is not included in the new GT metrics report, and that just means you need to add a width and height to the image's HTML. That can be done using the add missing images dimensions in WP Rocket, or it can be just done manually by adding a width and height to the HTML. Also make sure you are serving your images through a CDN. If you're using Rocket CDN or Bunny CDN, Cloudflare does not do this, but any CDN with a CDN URL, you want to make sure images are served through that instead of your domain. And this usually requires a CDN rewrite. Perf Matters does this, and it will basically rewrite all your image URLs to include the CDN URL instead of your domain. Finally, use adaptive images that will resize smaller images specifically for mobile devices. Disabling hot linking can be done in Cloudflare or WP Rocket, and that prevents people from embedding images on your website on their own. Stripping exif data is usually done through ShortPixel or whatever plugin you're using. Downgrade quality for slower connections. I think only Optimal does this. But if users are on a slow connection, it basically reduces the quality of the image so the page loads, loads faster. If you're embedding YouTube videos on your website, make sure you lazy load the iframe and video. Replace the YouTube iframe with a preview image. You can also use WP YouTube Lite. For self-hosted videos, you might want to offload them using Amazon CloudFront or DigitalOcean Spaces. WP Offload Media can help with that. And finally, if you're using Elementor, Adam from WP Crafter has a nice video on embedding YouTube videos pretty much without sacrificing any performance, so be sure to watch it. Optimizing your database is usually done in your cache plugin, but I definitely recommend installing WP Optimize once in a while because it actually lets you go through your individual database tables and delete tables left behind by old uninstalled plugins. So if you ever installed a plugin and then uninstalled it, it will leave behind these tables which you probably don't need. If you never plan on using that plugin again, you will see it as not installed in WP Optimize 
minimized and you can remove it. Of course, I always recommend taking a backup, but the main things you want to do are schedule database cleanups about once a week. And then especially if you install plugins and then delete them, install WP Optimize once in a while and clean your database from those old plugin tables. Some plugins, CSS, and JavaScript load across your entire website, even in areas where they're not being used. Unloading assets will disable those in certain places and reduce the amount of CSS and JavaScript on your website. The main plugins that do this are Perf Matters and Asset Cleanup. Asset Cleanup also has a pro version. So the main difference between those is Perf Matters, first of all, costs money. It was developed by Kingsta and I think it's very lightweight. And it's also very user friendly. It's the one I use just because I think it's way easier to work with. Asset Cleanup is free, but there's too much going on in the plugin in my opinion. Asset Cleanup Pro, it does let you disable custom CSS, which Perf Matters and the free version of Asset Cleanup do not. Once you choose a plugin and install it, you should enable the script manager. Once you do that, you can just go through your website and you'll see the script manager at the top. Your job is to find which scripts are loading in places they shouldn't and then to disable them. You're going to need to go through different parts of your website and go through the script manager to do this because my blog loads my comments, maybe a social sharing plugin, this little email form right here in the sidebar. So different parts of your website are gonna load certain things. That's why you need to go through different types of content and find the scripts that are loaded in places they shouldn't be. So to do that, enable the script manager and click it and you're gonna find all your scripts that are loaded. If you don't use something in certain areas of your website, then you can see you can disable them everywhere but posts or everywhere but pages, using regular expressions to disable them everywhere except certain URLs, current URLs, there's a lot of options. For example, I don't use WP Discus, my comments plugin on pages. So I disable it everywhere but posts. For my structured content plugin for FAQ rich snippets, I only use that on posts, so I would do the same thing. You can also do the same thing for social sharing plugins and other type of content that is only on your blog. Same general concept for pages. Elementor specifically, you can usually disable Elementor Sticky, Swiper, Dialog, Share Links, Children Swiper, Animations, which can be very heavy, and Elementor Icons. If you're not using them then disable them. This will require a little bit of time and testing but it can really help you reduce the amount of CSS and JavaScript on your website. There are a lot of things inside your WordPress dashboard that you probably don't need and disabling them can save you server resources and make your website slightly faster. To do this, Perf Matters is definitely my go-to plugin. Inside the settings, it lets you disable all the bloat that you really don't need. Just be sure to test each feature. I'll leave a link in the video description to Perf Matters and my tutorial on Perf Matters for the settings that I use, but you can hover over the question mark to get a description of what each option does and it just lets you disable things like the heartbeat api limiting post revisions you could use five but you really don't need 30 which will clog up your database increasing the autosave interval to save on server resources changing the login url so bots don't hit the default admin and login urls just a lot of things in there lazy learning woocommerce disabling woocommerce scripts and styles and cart fragments a general bloat removal plugin but it also has other optimizations that a lot of cache plugins don't do like doing a cdn rewrite and making sure your images are served from your cdn hosting google analytics locally and choosing the script type so some of these are smaller scripts than others or disable display features which prevents a second request to double click a lot of miscellaneous things in this plugin like preloading and pre-connecting database cleanup and does the script manager to unload assets Elaine javascript can really improve your website's initial load time if you have javascript on your website and it doesn't need to load immediately then it can be delayed 
WP Rocket has a default list of JavaScript they delay in the plugin. So if you're already using that, it is automatically added to the delayed JavaScript execution setting. Most of these are third-party code, like Google AdSense, Tag Manager, Hotjar. But you can also do this with Gravatars, WP Discus, and comments and social sharing plugins. So make sure if you have JavaScript that is loaded below the fold and can be delayed, that you at least test it out. WP Rocket does it upon user interaction. So when users scroll down the page, it will be delayed. Or in Flying Scripts, this is a free plugin by WP Speed Matters. This works a little differently where the JavaScript is only loaded upon a timeout period, which you set in seconds. It really just depends on which one you want to use, but I would definitely test out delaying JavaScript. Prefetch, Preload, and Preconnect are all types of browser resource hints that basically tell them to download something ahead of time. Prefetch, you basically just want to look at your GT metrics or PageSpeed Insights report, find out which third-party code is loaded on your website, like Google Analytics or Google AdSense, whatever. You can also use this list of common domains to prefetch. I'll leave a link to this in the video description. And what you want to do is copy the ones that are loaded on your website and paste them into the prefetch DNS requests in WP Rocket. If you're not using WP Rocket, you can also use Perf Matters pre-party resource hints, or you can do it through manual code. But make sure you are doing a DNS prefetch to the third-party scripts on your website. Next is the preloading. So this can be done with links. You can use either WP Rocket or Flying Pages by WP Speed Matters does this. If users hover over a link, it will download the page in the background. So by the time someone actually clicks that link, the page will load pretty much instantly. You can also preload fonts. What you wanna do is go to the waterfall tab, go to the fonts tab, copy your font URLs and preload them in either WP Rocket right here or in Perf Matters or manually or pre-party resource hints. Pre-connect establishes an early connection and should really only be done for uh, CDN URLs or fonts. So if your fonts aren't hosted locally and they're pulling from fonts.gstatic.com, you can pre-connect that. Or if you're using a CDN URL like Bunny CDN or Rocket CDN, then you can also pre-connect that. WP Rocket does not have an option to pre-connect, so you'll either need to do this manually through code through Perf Matters or through Pre-Party. And those are browser resource hints and can really help speed up your website. If you have avoid landing page redirect errors or any redirect errors on your website, double check to make sure you're serving the correct HTTPS or non-HTTPS version and the www or non-www version of your website and make sure all your assets, including your images, are being served from the correct version. Other than that, redirects are usually caused by plugins that create redirects and I would just try to avoid slow plugins or ones that create redirects in general and to review my common list of slow plugins to avoid. WordPress has a pretty common issue with bad bots. They'll basically crawl your website and usually collect statistics like Ahrefs or Amazon.compute.aws and consume server resources by crawling your website at no benefit to you. So you really want to block them. To do that, check your bad bots in WordFence Live Traffic Report. You can filter by crawlers, which are usually the culprits. And to block them, you can install Black Hole for Bad Bots by Jeff Starr. It's highly recommended and has good reviews. Or you can use the bot protection if you're using Cloudways. You can also block them individually using Cloudflare firewall rules but that is a little more time consuming and you can only block up to five host names. So I generally recommend either Black Hole or Cloudways bot protection. If you are using Black Hole, just be sure to look at the installation instructions because you will need to copy a code and paste it into your robots.txt file. I would also move your WordPress login and admin page. A lot of the times the bots will target those specific pages and if you leave them as a default, then they will constantly hit those pages and consume resources. 
So by moving that, the bots are usually not smart enough and they will just run into <laughs> no page at all. You can either do this using a plugin like WPS Hide Login, or if you're using Perf Matters, they also have an option to move the login page. There are a few specific optimizations you can do for mobile, but before you do that, I would definitely make sure you take care of the desktop optimizations first, because those almost always carry over and make your mobile website load faster too. If you're using heavy page builders or cheap shared hosting or heavy plugins, just take care of the desktop stuff first and don't worry so much about your mobile load times until you've at least done that. Otherwise, the specific optimizations you can do are serving smaller images to mobile, which can be done using an adaptive images plugin like ShortPixel. The optimal plugin lets you downgrade quality for slower connections if they detect your users are on a slower connection, they'll actually reduce the image quality by 40%. Obviously, make sure mobile caching is enabled. If you aren't using a cache plugin that has mobile caching, then switch to one. Don't use AMP. It can make your mobile site load faster, but Kingsta did a whole study on how their leads drop 59%. It completely changes the design of your mobile website, and it's honestly a pain. The one thing I can't stress enough is to make sure you're website is actually mobile responsive. Even if your theme is responsive, it doesn't mean that you don't have mobile design errors, even if they don't show up in Search Console. You really need to hire an experienced developer to review your mobile website. Aim for a really simplistic design on your mobile website. If certain things don't need to load, like social sharing plugins or heavy JavaScript on mobile, then take it out of your mobile website and just make it load as fast as possible. WooCommerce sites load extra scripts, styles, and they typically require more plugins, and they also load cart fragments. To optimize these, you can use the Disable WooCommerce Bloat plugin. It has really good reviews. Once you install it, it just lets you disable all the bloat caused by WooCommerce including disabling WooCommerce scripts and styles on non-e-commerce pages, probably the best thing you can do to optimize WooCommerce, disabling cart fragments and widgets, but that is a really good plugin. In fact, that has more disable WooCommerce bloat features than Perf Matters does. Perf Matters has a few of them, but honestly, this free plugin does a really good job. Otherwise, go easy on WooCommerce extensions and plugins in general. I understand they usually require more, but just try to go easy and choose lightweight plugins. Skip shared hosting altogether. There's no reason you should run WooCommerce on it. If you're running an e-commerce website, you have $10 or more a month for cloud hosting. <laughs> so just try to avoid the shared hosting, page builders, other optimizations in this tutorial. Obviously, you should keep WordPress core theme and plugins updated, but you also want to make sure you're using the latest PHP version in your hosting account. PHP 8.0 is coming out pretty soon. Once it's released in your hosting account, be sure to at least test it out and use it if you can. If you're using cloud hosting, make sure you're using the latest MySQL or MariaDB version. Whenever a plugin like Elementor or Divi or WP Rocket or Cache plugin releases a new update, Date, make sure you view the change log because they're constantly releasing new features that can help improve your site speed. So Elementor released improved asset loading and the optimized DOM output. WP Rocket is constantly adding new features as well. Divi is trying to add new features but is right now only focusing on their admin instead of the front end. But keep an eye on those change logs for performance enhancements. There's a few extra optimizations that didn't really fall under any other category, so I'm going to go over those really quick. Protect your login pages I kind of covered in the block bad bot section. Move your WordPress login. Use Brotly instead of gzip because it's faster. CDN rewrite if you're using perf matters, considering enabling this so images are actually being served from the CDN. Defer non-critical JavaScript using a cache plugin auto-optimize. That is a really good plugin for advanced control 
control of defer and async. Don't enable Yoast indexables. It has pretty poor reviews on their blog. Most people are using rank math anyway because it's more lightweight. To combine or not to combine CSS and JavaScript. WP Johnny has an article about this, but sometimes you should, sometimes you shouldn't. He says smaller sites usually should and larger sites shouldn't. But you can read his article if you want. Just know that sometimes it's not always right to combine CSS and JavaScript files. If you're looking for a full list of really good speed plugins, I did create a blog post about it. I can go over some of these really quickly, but I won't consume the entire video on this. Oxygen Builder, really good plugin. It's a theme builder, very lightweight alternative to Elementor or Divi. WP Rocket, Lightspeed, and SG Optimizer are usually the cache plugins I, I recommend. Lightspeed if you're using Lightspeed, SG Optimizer if you're using SiteGround. Otherwise, in most instances, use WP Rocket. Perf Matter is an asset cleanup for unloading assets. Auto Optimize for deferring or asyncing. OMGF for hosting fonts locally. Or you can also use Transfonter, Short Pixel, and then Adaptive Images. Optimal is good, especially for downgrading image quality on slower connections. It also has really good reviews. WP Optimize, once in a while install it to clean your database because plugins like WP Rocket don't let you go through individual plugin tables. Query Monitor for finding slow plugins and different queries on your website. Swap Google Fonts to ensure text remains visible during a web font load, or you can do that manually. G. Joe from WP Speed Matters, I hope I pronounced his name right, but he has a lot of really good plugins on his website or you can just search the WordPress repository for them like flying analytics, flying pages, flying everything. Also it's coming out with a cache plugin although it's, I don't think it's quite ready to be compared to WP Rocket or any light speed plugin yet. Breeze by Cloudways I probably wouldn't use just because WP Rocket has a lot more features. WP Fastest Cache, all these um, you really shouldn't need unless you're not using WP Rocket because most cache plugins don't have these features like WP YouTube Lite, Lazy Loading Videos, Harpy Control, Pre-Party, some of this can be done with manual code and you don't need plugin for. Obviously you don't want to install a whole bunch of speed plugins. Um, that's why like WP Rocket and Oxygen or Lightspeed, I mean, you really should only need those and maybe Perf Matters and an image optimization plugin. You don't need all of them. Your cache plugin should honestly take care of most of it. WP User Avatar is really good. I use it on my website for hosting Gravatars locally. So that's basically the speed plugins in a nutshell. If you have specific items in PageSpeed Insights or GT Metrics you need to fix, I did make a list of all the ones that PageSpeed Insights have. I basically just copied everything. <laughs> from Think with Google and paste it into one little screenshot. I also did my best attempt to make it specific to WordPress on my speed guide and have some optimizations there. But honestly, I would just do a search in the Facebook groups for your page speed insights item. So if you have a void landing page redirects, search the groups because there is a lot of good information out here and many people have already answered these questions. You can comment on my blog if you want, but I will not answer to specific recommendations unless you actually search the groups. So please take advantage of this. If you're looking for resources either to find information or hire somebody to help fix your website, then this section is for you. Facebook groups I recommend. WP Speed Matters is good. WordPress Hosting is good. WordPress speedup is good, but Christo from SiteGround is an admin, so if you post anything bad about their time to first bite, you might get banned, or the post might be deleted. Gijo's plugins are all really good. WP Johnny offers speed optimization services, and more specifically, page builder removal services, but he is amazing. I hired him and can't speak highly enough about him, but he is very busy, so I'll leave a link to him in the video description if you want. And if he's too busy, you can also hire... I've been working with Pronaya for many, many years, um, since 2012, I believe, and he still does speed optimization. I don't think he works with Elementor. He has his portfolio. I think he needs to update a little. 
but you can always reach out to him too and I'll leave a link to his profile in the video description. Well, that's it for WordPress speed optimization. I gotta get back to playing Rocket League. New Look also wanted to be in this video, so hey, look, we're famous. How many views did we get? If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Otherwise, I really am gonna go play Rocket League. Peace.